Um, my name is Crystal Roberts. I am the National Director of Resident Enrichment at MBK Senior Living. And like a lot of you, uh, I am too in isolation at this moment. So today we want to take some time to really talk to everyone about not only what we can do for our seniors and what we've been doing in our communities, but what we can do to help you too. Because just like everyone else, you are probably at the point where you have a little bit of quarantine fatigue. This is getting old, it's getting exhausting, and you're trying to hold on with every ounce you have. So we wanna talk about some things that can really help you in this process. So I'm going to screen share with you really quick. A presentation. All right. So we're gonna talk about things that we can do for ourselves and for others during this time. So first, thanks for joining. I greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us. Uh, we really wanna share with you once again, what are some things we're doing for our seniors currently and for ourselves? And what are some things that you can do for yourself during this time of social distancing? Here's what we're gonna cover. First, why is connection critical for human beings in nature? I always like to know what's the medical reason? Why does this help me? How does it benefit me as a person or my family? Second, what are the binnies? We're gonna learn about that today. What are the binnies to doing these sort of things? How we can stay connected in multiple ways, not just with technology, but there's so many ways before technology came along that human beings stayed connected. We can talk about some of those ways too. Fourth, it's all about the SOPs, that sense of purpose. It's important that we all have that. And last but not least, how do we create connections and keep our loved ones and our family members that suffer with Alzheimer's and dementia engaged at the same time? So we will get started. First, um, you know, I love the song, One Republic, Can I Get a Connection? Because I think most of the world feels that way right now. You know, why is connecting important? Let's talk about that. You know, if you think about it, human beings are pack creatures by nature. We crave to be around others. We crave to be useful. So when we no longer have that human connection, it can really create a lot of problems for us. We like to be connected to our community so we can help. A lot of us get our sense of purpose by giving to others and helping of others. And this is a great way that we can do that by staying connected. And we have to remember in times like these, when stress is very high, you have to stay connected to yourself. You always hear this over and over again from everyone in healthcare that takes care of someone with a senior. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. Sometimes you have to come first. Sometimes you have to find a way to connect to yourself to give yourself a break. And when you're caring for someone at home or you're stressed about your family, and we're stuck in a quarantine where no one knows when the end will be, it creates a lot of stress for all of us. We always say right now, we, we appreciate all of our heroes, everyone essential on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, our care staff. Uh, but we have to realize right now, the anti-superhero of everything is loneliness. Most of our seniors are now isolated. They feel lonely. And loneliness has some very bad, bad benefits that come with it. So when you are lonely and feel disconnected from the world, it creates multiple problems for a human being. First of all, you know, when you feel alone, just that feeling of lonely kicks your inflammatory system in to go into responsive fight or flight. It decreases your immune system. When you feel lonely, you actually have bigger issues with depression, anxiety, self-esteem, it actually is so critical. Studies have shown loneliness is actually just as lethal for you as smoking 15 cigarettes per day. So we have to talk about if loneliness is what a lot of our seniors are dealing with right now and a lot of us are dealing with right now, how do we help bridge that gap for people? Because right now we have to be concerned about mental health, making sure that people can get through this quarantine or isolation and still come out on the other side. So what are the outcomes, the pluses and minuses? Well, think about it. If I could tell you, I could give you a tool that could increase your life 50% longer than other people. If I can give you a tool that help you combat chronic illnesses, like, I don't know, cardiovascular disease, cancer, 
osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, or if it will make you feel happier, make your brain work better, and by the way, improve your self-esteem, alleviate your anxiety, and decrease your depression, wouldn't you take that pill? Well, unfortunately, it's not even in a pill form. It's really socialization. So the health benefits to your immune system are all of those things I just talked about. All of those things that can make you feel stronger, feel better, and be a happier, healthier human being, have a great sense of self-esteem. And by the way, studies actually show people who have strong social connections, that actually great family and friend connections, actually live at 50% longer than those people who don't have strong social connections and ties. So think about that for a second. It is that critical to you as a human being to be able to socialize with other people. And new research is starting to show there's a link between regular socialization and decreasing your risk of Alzheimer's. So everything that I just told you are all of the pluses that come from doing this great thing called socialization and connecting to other human beings. And it, once again, it can help boost your immune system. Just like feeling lonely can decrease your immune system. So it's really understanding that what we're doing for our seniors and for ourselves, it's not just a way to fill time or kill time. It really has a phenomenal outcome if we do it and we provide those opportunities for people to connect. So this may be interesting for some of you. So how connected are you? Have you ever thought about that? A lot of us think that we have great social circles and that we're busy all the time. But now that our routine has stopped and a lot of us, our sense of purpose was our work that's gone away, how do you make sure that you're doing the right things for yourself mentally and keeping yourself on track or for your loved one? Maybe it's your grandparents, maybe it's a great aunt, maybe it's your mom, your dad, your grandparents. This is a great resource I'm showing you right here. It's how connected are you? It's a actual isolation self-assessment on AARP that if you or anyone goes on to take it, it is a very short, short assessment. I promise it won't take more than 10 minutes. It will actually give you resources to help you in different ways, such as increasing connectedness to your community, increasing your connectedness to your friends and families. And it has great resources. Even a resource I'm gonna talk about later, which is actual virtual volunteerism, where you can get on AARP and find ways to virtually volunteer from your home sitting behind your iPhone, your laptop, your iPad, your tablet, or your computer. So this is a great resource to take this. If you cannot find it, simply go to AARP and look under the COVID information. So there's three components, I think, to staying connected. Staying connected um, to others, which are family and friends, staying connected to ourselves, and staying connected to our community in times like these, which we really want to help others, versus staying connected to family and friends with technology. We always have to understand not everyone likes technology, not everyone has technology, and not everyone uses technology. So we're gonna talk about both ways to stay connected in each of these categories, but how do we do it with our technology and how do we help our seniors or our loved ones who don't have technology? The easiest one right now is what we're doing. It's a Zoom meeting, a Zoom conference call. It's a Zoom happy hour. You can have a Zoom virtual Mother's Day celebration. So it's getting your friends together on technology like this and having open dialogue and communicating. Think about that. You can stay connected to any person anywhere in the world if they have a machine to plug into to see you. You also have FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, all of these different ways that you can virtually stay connected to others and they can stay connected to you. So for example, if you're a person who said recently, you know, I really love to lose some weight. And right before this started, I just signed up with, you know, a personal trainer and now I'm going to have to cancel it because I can't do it. Uh, yeah, you can. You can do it just like we're doing right now. A Zoom meeting, a FaceTime meeting, a WhatsApp meeting. So there's great ways to continue to be connected by using current technology. If you want to have some fun with your family and friends or grandkids, house party is a great option. It is part of, you know, a way to get a group together. You can play trivia, do great fun things together, and you can make sure that you can even, you know, see who's smarter than a fifth grader with great grandkids in Texas. 
So it's a great way to keep you in a group, have a great chat, but play some trivia and do some competitive things. It makes it a little bit more fun. Make it a social happy hour. I shared with a colleague yesterday, a girlfriend of mine invited me to her grandmother's Zoom party, and it's called Martinis with Mamaw. And we literally drink martinis for an hour and a half, and I had the best time listening to her stories. So sometimes it's just trying to find those connections and meeting new people at the same time. There are great resources like free college classes. How many times have you said, I wish I would have taken this class in college, or I should have finished that class, or I really want to know the psychology behind happiness, or maybe you want to know more about finance. There are multiple universities, MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Penn State, that offer free classes for you to take. Now you don't get credits, but you basically audit them. Some of the only complaints I've heard about some of these online classes is you may need the books to follow along with the curriculum as it moves forward. But if you wanna see a good lecture, learn something new, or maybe get some more information about infection control right now and the future of what this looks like, these are great alternatives are free college classes. There's also iTunes University where you can watch free lectures and participate. Another is Netflix party. For those of you that love your viewing parties with your friends or like to watch a TV show with friends or movie night at your house, or maybe you had the grandkids over and that's what you did every Saturday. That doesn't have to stop now. You can use Netflix party. Next clip party gives you a chance to really invite people on to watch the same show that you're watching on Netflix and actually do comments on the side so everyone can live chat and talk about it. Once again, another great technology to connect you. Another thing I want to talk about right now is dating online. For a lot of seniors who are single or people who are single, they feel like everything just stopped and they've been on, you know, this lovely journey of finding someone new to enjoy their life with. And they feel like they've had to give that up. Reality is you don't have to do that. Now dating online is phenomenal. There are virtual dates. There are dating chat rooms for multiple people to enter at once. And it's a great way, once again, to connect to other human beings and family and friends. Another option is the AARP. They have great resources, like I said earlier, volunteer uh, projects and things to work on, along with the assessment I showed you earlier that you can take for isolation that will give you great resources on how to help yourself and your family if you feel you're not getting that social need met. Another fun thing that we see a lot of recently is virtual reality. Uh, virtual reality is really great. We can virtual reality a couple of things. One, Oculus get glasses in VR. They actually wear them and go fishing and visit places around the world. They're easy to find online to purchase. Another virtual reality is travel. You can Google travel and go anywhere in the world. You can also virtually visit a multitude of places. The White House, Buckingham Palace, the aquarium on Monterey to see the fish and the stingray. You literally can go once again anywhere in the world and go on travel. So if you've always said, you know, I wish we would have gone and really gone to the beach in San Diego and hung out on that vacation. Pull the beach up on your computer, your iPad, your tablet, sit in the backyard with a margarita or a cold beer or a nice glass of water and kick back and enjoy the location. Sometimes in life, we have to make the best of what we have. And next is really, once again, socially connecting online and making sure that your loved ones have that ability in the technology. We also have to talk about how do we connect our loved ones that don't have technology. I have a lot of friends who dealt with this in the last couple of weeks and they seem to always call me and it's a funny story, but we actually have come up with some very creative ideas. Um, also, I have an aunt, uh, Edna, who is my great aunt, who I have to help with technology, which is very frustrating. Her biggest thing is she forgets to plug things in to keep them charged. So it's not that she says she can't use it, it just doesn't charge all the way. So we have to think of ways of how do we take some of our seniors or people who are not tech savvy or have technology and keep them connected to others. One of the easiest ways is to phone a friend. You do not need a cell phone, you just need a landline. And if any person in the world took your cell phone like I have mine right here, and you opened up the contact list, or you just pulled out that address or black book that Aunt Edna has, and say, why don't you just start with the A's and call every person you know, two people a day until you're done. Reach out to other people right now. Just say hello. Hearing that voice can make a huge difference if you visually can't see somebody. 
Another thing you can do is go back to the old school ways before technology of cell phones existed. We wrote letters and greeting cards and postcards. You know, Mother's Day is coming up. A really great thing for a lot of moms, like I would enjoy it too, would be having your children or your family inundate you with Mother's Day cards. So on that day, you get 50 Mother's Day cards or postcards or greeting cards versus that one. Because unfortunately, even though we physically can't spend time together for a lot of us, we can still connect in other ways. Maybe start a, a letter writing campaign for adopt a platoon or adopt a soldier overseas. It's a great way to have a pen pal. The other thing is thinking about how to stay connected without technology through your church. A lot of church organizations need people to send the greeting cards monthly or type up the newsletter or make sure to call all the congregation to let them know they'll be moving things to online or just to check in with those people who are elderly or at home that don't get out a lot. But there's great ways to volunteer for your church that doesn't involve technology. Some fun things we love to do are chalk art. It's getting people out with chalk on the sidewalks to write I love you letters to families and having them to come by and read them and write letters back so we can take a walk outside to see them again. Of course, with social distancing always occurring. You can actually get chalk from anywhere online. Uh, Rust-Oleum paint has an actual spray paint chalk that washes off with a pressure washer or with rain as it starts to rain. So some interesting fun ways to maybe leave neighbors notes to drop off thank yous in driveways to those people who are nurses and healthcare and essential workers that you know. You can actually walk over to their driveway, spray paint a big thank you with chalk paint. It washes off later and let them know that you love them and greatly appreciate them. Another option is care packages. It's having a way for you to help your neighbors during these times. And maybe it's dropping off you know, chocolate chip cookies at the sidewalk for every neighbor and letting them know by phone that you dropped it off. Maybe it's making care packages for all those people in your neighborhood who are police officers, EMTs, nurses, essential line staff, grocery store workers. Think about those people and what could you do for your neighbors. Maybe the care package could be something that you and your family could work on for stay-at-home families right now. Maybe if you were a retired teacher or a retired professor, maybe there's a way you can offer to do phone tutoring with the children or be able to drop off lessons for them to learn that way it helps the parents out during the time of homeschooling, which I think everyone is starting to appreciate teachers more and more often now. One of our favorites that we do with our residents are window visits. Window visits are what we call the drive-by. It's a great way for you to see the eyeballs and the face of your loved one, because sometimes the phone is not enough, you need to see them. Window visits need to be done very safely. Number one, if you're doing a window visit, the window must stay closed so you can have those conversations as not to accidentally infect someone. Think about the fun things you can do. You can put up masking tape or painter's tape and play tic-tac-toe. You can put up uh, watercolors and finger paints that can be wiped off. The dry erase markers, you can write love notes or play SOS or all those great old games you played back the day in the back of the car when you went on those long road trips with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa. The other thing with window visits is if you are going to open the window, you need to be six feet back from where that window opening is to be safe for that senior that you're seeing. But window visits are great. You can schedule them in your neighborhood. You can organize the neighborhood uh, kids to come by. You've seen a multitude of people doing parades, flyovers. There was a little boy today locally where I live who wanted a birthday party. He's five and he loves garbage trucks. So they called the city and the city actually had every garbage truck drive by at a certain time this morning so he could be saluted for his birthday party. So it's coming up with creative ways that we can celebrate grandma's 90th birthday, that we can see great at Edna, or we can check in our neighbor down the street. Maybe even if you, are, you have a loved one who plays a musical instrument, you can stroll up and down the neighborhood or sit in your own front yard and play an outdoor concert for people. The next are painted rocks. We call these the thank yous. These are writing thank yous down and having them distributed throughout your neighborhood so as people take a walk, they can see those thank yous and that inspiration. Um, doing homemade gifts, we talked about a little earlier, but last but not least is my favorite. It's walkie talkies. I have a friend of mine whose parents cannot keep their cell phone charged long enough and they cannot hear or use it properly. So we came up with the idea of walkie talkies. You can purchase them online, Amazon, Walmart, any place you can think about and you literally drop one off on the front porch. And that way, if you wanna drive by in the afternoon and turn the walkie on and talk to mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, or even a neighbor you're concerned about down the street who has no family, 
or if you have grandkids you'd like to see or hear, this is a great way to be able to provide that talking back and forth for people who are not very good with technology or maybe don't have a cell phone. Once again, staying connected with that technology are all the things that we did before cell phones came along for a lot of us. So we have to kind of go back to what I call the old school ways of doing things. Next is how do you stay connected to yourself? Um, anyone on this call would probably not be telling you the truth if you said you didn't feel a little bit of stress. Right now you probably have what's called COVID brain. Um, you wake up and go, I have no idea what day it is, but it starts with a Y. Or you're walking to go somewhere and you forget what you're doing because you can't find your eyeglasses and know by the way they're on your face and they've been there the whole time. When we've had such a disruption in our routine and such a unprecedented situation that we're dealing with, it creates a lot of anxiety for all of us. Uh, and when you talk to people or read research of people who go off to NASA up into space or to the Arctic to do some kind of you know, isolation for research for months, they will tell you it's critical that you find ways to stay connected and to keep yourself decreasing your stress level. Because if your stress level increases, so your immune system starts to be compromised. And right now, remember, we're trying to keep everyone healthy. So you have to find ways to take care of you before you can take care of others. A lot of us are not very good at self-care. We're not great at it. We are caregivers by nature, or we're moms, or grandmothers, or aunts, or uncles, or dads. And we put everybody else first before ourselves. But now is the time to maybe reflect back on why it's important to actually spend some time with yourself. You know, think about it. You can Zoom your best friend and complain all day long. You know, there's great studies that show that people that have good solid connections to friends or family where they can actually discuss things that are occurring actually process uh, emotional situations better. And I don't know about you guys, but this is a very emotional situation for a lot of people right now. You can stay connected to yourself through YouTube, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, Learning how to deep breathe for relaxation is its own form of YouTubers out there. Ways that you can calm yourself and relax. Maybe it's listening to music. Maybe it's putting on your iPod and doing a dance in the living room like nobody's watching. Right now, you should do whatever you need to make yourself feel good. Using music is a great way to help yourself. I actually, a couple of weeks ago, had a day where I felt really down and out. So the following day, I made a resolution that I would only listen to positive, happy music all day long. And I gotta be honest, it made a huge difference. So sometimes we just need to tune into those things that make us feel good. Maybe it's having that virtual visitor. You know, maybe it's that grandchild you haven't got to see, having a one-on-one -on -one and having a brownie with them over the phone. Maybe it's doing your virtual appointments to take care of yourself, your doctor's appointments. Just because the healthcare system is having multiple issues right now doesn't mean we neglect our own health and care. Um, maybe right now it's having that telemedicine where you can actually talk to a mental health professional. Uh, there is a gigantic increase in the amount of people that are using telehealth appointments right now. Um, I think I read somewhere that it was almost 11,000 visits a week, which is now up to a couple hundred thousand. So you can still stay connected to get that help you need for your physical health, which is critical and also your mental health right now, because it's important to have that outlet or someone to talk to. Anti-anxiety and sleeping uh, medications are on a huge increase right now, because multiple Americans are struggling with what we're dealing with. The other thing to do is do an online learning. Right now, with some free time you have, it's good to get back to learning some of those things you wish you would have taken time to learn. Maybe it's sewing, knitting, maybe it's remodeling the bathroom, maybe it's learning how to um, water paint or uh, oil paint. Maybe it's learning how to garden. Maybe it's learning how to um, paint or recock something in your house. It's good old house chores. Literally online learning of so many opportunities. I started a Spanish class four weeks ago. It's amazing. It's free. It's online. If you just Google or go to YouTube and put in free Spanish lessons or free French lessons, now's the time to take some of this free time you have and use it to focus on something that will benefit you and help you. Another thing that we forget, especially for our seniors, is that sense of purpose, a feeling like you have a place and something to do and somewhere to show up to every day. And providing that sense of purpose is through teaching someone else. For our seniors who are master gardeners, or they're so good at sewing, those sort of things are what we can display on a YouTube, 
a Facebook chat, a Zoom meeting like this to teach others how to do these things. Maybe it's doing tutoring online or tutoring on Facebook or WhatsApp. A lot of parents would love a little bit of help right now with schoolwork. And think about this. Once again, it's a great way to give someone a sense of purpose by allowing them to help others and teach what they know. Even some of our seniors who are retired mental health professionals, it would be a great opportunity for you to maybe reach out to family and friends you know to see if someone wants to schedule a Zoom meeting or a Face meeting, you know, FaceTime, just so you can check in with them and help them a little bit. But teaching someone and helping someone is a great way to help yourself feel better. Uh, another great option is good technology is video games. And I mean everything from the Xbox to PlayStation to Wii, even down to handheld video games that seniors can use that are easy. There is everything. If you think about it, uh, video games, you can actually get on virtual and wear a headset and connect to other people and talk to them. You can actually play video games on the Wii where you're learning to self-connect to yourself, such as deep breathing and learning how to have better balance and learning how to meditate and be calm and still, which I don't know about you, but I think I could use some of that. The other thing with handheld games, a lot of great opportunities. So if you have someone who loves gambling, handheld poker games. If you have someone who loves race games, all those new handheld games now, once again, you can find them online anywhere. And sometimes they're simpler for our seniors to use. You know, and back to video games, a great thing that we love to do in our community is allow people to use the weed play bowling. It's physical exercise, it gets you moving, and it gives you something to do. And last but not least, connected to self is really about, you know, those spiritual services, still attending those services as you move forward. A lot of churches and spiritual organizations have now moved everything online. That way you can still connect with others and have those needs met, but you don't have to be physically close to each other. So don't forget, those services are also great. Let's say you have someone or you yourself aren't great with technology or it's just not your cup of tea. What are things that you can do? A couple of things. This actually applies to everyone. Get outside in the sunshine. Get out of your house. Have coffee and breakfast in the back patio. Research and study shows if you absorb vitamin D, it helps with your inflammation in your body to decrease it. It's great for your immune system. It's also good for your sleeping to help regulate those sleep rhythms. So getting out to get sunshine, five minutes to 15 to 20 minutes a day is really good. Just getting out in nature and taking a walk. Believe it or not, you'd be shocked how many physicians actually now prescribe outdoor walking as a form of care for people, whether it's pain relief, anxiety, depression, any of those things going on. It is really good to be out, disconnected from electronics and the world and enjoy the nature that you're in. The fresh air, the sunshine, and starting to have that realization that uh, we're small and Part of a gigantic big world. So it's great to get out and get some fresh air, wave to your neighbors, maybe walk the dog. Other things are hobbies, the good old school hobbies, gardening. You know, before the internet came along, there was a lot of us that had a lot of hobbies. We gardened, you know, we did fun things. We did things like maybe house projects. We did things like learning how to sew, knit, those sort of things. Maybe your hobby was taking care of animals and, you know, taking care of all the cats in the neighborhood. But hobbies are something that we need to tune back into. Maybe it's hiking, maybe it's running. Maybe for you a hobby is helping someone else. So maybe taking that hobby of gardening that you love so much and calling neighbors and getting them together and coming up with a plan to put in a community garden because if you're really good at it, you can teach along the way and schedule your time slots of who gets to show up to the community garden to work. That way you have proper social distancing. But it's a great way to help your community and help yourself Gardening has phenomenal benefits. It has been shown to really help people with depression. So once again, it's a great tool in your belt to have to help you. Some other things to stay connected to self to really think about are really journaling and doing those things that help us process our emotions. Right now, this is a very, once again, high emotional stress, anxiety for a lot of us. So sometimes journaling those things and getting them out, it's really a good way. It's great for your parents. It's great for your grandkids. It's great for you making sure you really have a chance to capture all these things you're dealing with right now. The other thing to think about is starting a gratitude journal or a gratitude ritual. Every morning you get up and write down three things that you're thankful for, three things that you are grateful for. 
in times of crisis and situations like these, we have to understand that sometimes we have to be grateful for what we have because there's those around us that don't have much. So sometimes reprocessing how we think about situations can help us move forward in them. Another is self-care. Once again, exercising, making sure that you're doing some form of exercising, whether that's in the backyard walking, you probably saw the story that I saw. There is a gentleman that ran a marathon in his apartment in New York by running around his bed for over and over for hour after hour after hour. But he was signed up for this marathon. He had trained for this marathon and for his mental health, he needed to complete this marathon. So doing some self-care of exercising, exercise release endorphins that make you feel good. It also helps with your serotonin. So once again, finding ways to exercise safely. If you're not sure, please reach out to your physician or other people who can help you with that. Another part of self-care is good sleep, good sleep hygiene. It's making sure that we're setting up our time for bedtime at night. It's really easy when you don't have an office to go to or a structure to show up to every day to get willy-nilly with your routine. But putting that routine back in will actually help you feel better connected to yourself. So sleeping well, making sure you're taking that hot bath or that warm milk before you go to bed. Making sure for self-care that you're also focusing on nutrition. You know, it's important to make sure that you're eating healthy for your immune system. And now's a great time to try out some new cooking recipes. If you're a person who's always said, you know what, I've always wanted to try to make sushi, but I don't think I can, now would be the time to try it. It's something fun, something different to do. And sometimes we have to think about within our self-care of our exercise and our sleeping, and making sure that we have good nutrition, I go back to we have to make sure we continue to meet those doctor's appointments, making sure that your medical health is also being addressed, along with addressing your mental health and making sure that you reach out for help as you need it. A lot of you know the number 911, you call that for emergencies, but there's a great number called 211. Most people have no idea even it exists. If you call 211 anywhere in the United States, this is through United Way and your local government, it's actually a number that you call or you can do it online where you can get resources for help. Maybe that's needing help with housing, mental health, doctor's appointments, um, paying those bills during the time when situations like this are going on, or need to be connected to other people or even volunteering to help. So 211, a great resource. All you have to do is call it on your phone. Another thing you have to focus on for self-care is really relaxation. We do not do a good job letting ourselves just have a break in life. For me, relaxation means something different than it is for you. But when you think about relaxation, I want you to think about the things that make you feel happy and excited. So anyone on the phone who's like, you know what, I love Thanksgiving because I get to make this big bowl of mashed potatoes that are full of 14 pounds of butter and eight packs of cream cheese. But I love it for Thanksgiving, it's my indulgence. Now's the time to make those mashed potatoes. Now's the time to do those things that make you feel good. Those sheets that you have for special occasion, Maybe that nightgown you've been waiting to wear when you went to the Caribbean, but maybe that cruise already passed because we couldn't go. Now's the time to break out your fine china, have those fun meals, do things that make you feel good and relaxed, hot bubble baths, taking a walk, talking with someone, or just spending time by yourself with your animals and your pets and in nature. But finding a way to decompress. You have to schedule yourself in to get that relaxation because no one's going to give it to you kids, the husband, the neighbors, no one's going to come over and say, hey, why don't you let me take care of everything while you go in and take a nap? You're going to have to do it for yourself and make yourself a priority. Another non-tech way that's a really great way to fill time right now, which I've got to tell you I found great solace in myself, is really looking at my own legacy projects and family trees. Now some time that you can call up old Aunt Edna and say, hey, Aunt Edna, tell me, how did Mr. Jim get married to four women in one year? Grandma told me this story and record those stories. They can either be written or they could be recorded by recording like we're doing now. Maybe doing that genealogy research you've always wanted to do. Maybe something fun to do is all of those what I call left behind projects we all have under our bed or in our closet or better yet in your garage. It's those scrapbooks and those photo albums you never finished. Maybe they were from a kid's fifth birthday party. Maybe they were from your times in college. Maybe they were from your grandchildren when they were first born, you were gonna put a scrapbook together and that never got around to it. Now's the time to the get around to it projects. Those sort of things you've been holding off that you've never had time to do, that now you have some downtime. 
And last but not least, a couple of things. Just touch base. A great way to stay connected to yourself is to touch base with others that you love and to make sure they're doing okay. As anyone knows, if you love someone and care for someone right now, you worry about them. So sometimes just touching base with that person, uh, that person that you're concerned about, making sure they're okay and hearing their voice, especially if you're a parent or you're taking care of your parents, it's really important. Some things that we've done for some of our residents though, because we talk about a sense of purpose is, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you wanna feel like you have a plan or something that you're looking forward to that is important for you. Uh, sometimes our seniors have no one left to take care of and they've raised families and had phenomenal careers. Um, we call it a beta anyone. So maybe giving them a beta fish or a fish aquarium or a hamster or something like that that they can take care of. That way they can actually stay connected to something that's not human but has great benefits also. If you just research pet therapy online, you will see the phenomenal benefits. A lot of them are all the things we talked about today that mimic socialization. So having something to look forward to taking care of. It could be an animal, it could be a plant, it could be an indoor herb garden, it could be a topsy-turvy garden, it could be an outdoor butterfly garden. Uh, it could be bird houses that you're putting together to put in the backyard to be able to create your own bird village. At this point, it's just finding something to take care of beyond yourself that gives you a sense of purpose. And last but not least, we have to learn to have fun. I always ask everyone this in any sort of things we do. When is the last time you've laughed so hard that you almost wet yourself? That something was so funny you couldn't stop laughing that now you're laughing at yourself for laughing at yourself. That whole heart laughter, that really deep belly laughter, it's really good for your immune system. It's the equivalent of you running on a treadmill for 45 minutes for your heart and your immune system. So have some fun. Watch a comedian, tell some jokes. I have a girlfriend every day that calls her dad at nine o'clock for the dad of the day joke. And his sole purpose is to search the internet to find the best corniest joke he can come up with. And she loves to start her day with this joke and it makes her laugh. But have some fun, blow some bubbles in the backyard. Do some of those fun things you did as a kid that you forgot about. Like maybe taking a book and laying in the backyard and looking at the skies and the stars and the clouds above and just being in nature and learning to relax. Maybe it's telling the, calling the grandkids and telling them some funny jokes. But learning to just be in the moment, have fun and enjoy what we have and enjoy the laughter and let things go for a minute. It's really critical to your overall mental health. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, we talked about earlier is those things such as, you know, the anti-hero right now, superhero is loneliness. So what are those things we can do to combat loneliness? How can we help people do the opposite of that? Uh, I want to know, and I'm not sure if you all know this, but there are phenomenal benefits to volunteering to help. Uh, first of all, you see them right now, improved sense of well-being, a sense of purpose, that SOP, think about it. What is your loved ones, your mom, dad, your kids, your grandparents, your great aunts, your uncles, what is their sense of purpose right now? How are they getting that self-esteem field? Think about if you give them a way to, you know, make them decrease their stress levels, live longer, have better brain functioning. All of that's through volunteering, medical proven situation, volunteering. Once again, like I started the call, if everything I told you could give it to you in a pill, everybody would rush out to take it. It's as simple as socialization. Same thing for volunteering. Some of those things we're trying to help our seniors and ourselves with can be combated by doing some of this great volunteering and making sure that in a time when the world seems so uncertain, you have a way to reach out to others to help. A lot of us get our sense of purpose by helping others. You are, um, you know, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, healthcare workers, teachers. Uh, think about this. We get our sense of happiness sometimes by helping others. So right now that's very hard for people who are used to volunteering that may not always get that opportunity. So how can we meet that need? So we have to stay connected to our community. I think for a lot of people, helping others, helping people out right now gives them a sense of control, which a lot of us feel we've lost. So how can we do that? First and foremost, you don't have to give up volunteering, first of all. There's virtual volunteers. Uh, right now, the uh, Library of Congress and Smithsonian are just two examples I'm giving you. 
are doing online virtual volunteers that are helping transcribe documents, file documents, and do all kinds of amazing things. Once again, you can virtual volunteer. If you go to the state of California, this is where you live, and look at the state of California website, even the state of California under the COVID-19 plan has a, how can I help with a multitude of ways that you can volunteer without leaving your home. Some other things you can do are sign petitions from your computer about making change on things. A lot of you have seen a lot of uproar lately about small business loans. Those changes happen because people get online and put petitions together to their government. Doing virtual fundraising to help people in times of need right now is a great thing to do. You know, maybe you can make homemade chocolate chip cookies and sell those in the neighborhood and make money to give back towards a cause. Buy from websites that give back. I'm not sure if a lot of you know this or not, but Amazon.com, you can go on and set it up where you can give back to the Alzheimer's Association, to local domestic violence shelters and different things within your community. It's all about going in and logging in and finding out what that code is. So when you're spending money, they're giving it back to the community at the same time. Some other great ways to stay connected to the community, tutoring and teaching others, finding a way to teach and tutor people during times like these but looking for ways that you can really help others. And sometimes volunteering to help others is just calling people who are home alone, who just need that friendly voice to listen to. Or for family and friends that you have that you feel are isolated, that have no one close to them, calling them on a regular basis and making sure to you know, stay connected with them, either virtually, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, all those great ways, or by actually picking up the phone to have that conversation. Next is, you know, how do you non-technology, can you volunteer? A lot of great things to do. Number one, making, you know, thank you baskets for essential line workers. Uh, there are a lot of people that are volunteering to make face masks. Uh, my mother-in-law is a very big sewer. She loves to sew. Um, she has probably tried to get materials from Joann's for the last three weeks, but everyone is sewing face masks to help out. So putting those things together where you can donate them to local hospitals, skilled nursing homes, assisted livings, your neighbors, your church, people who need them is a great way to do it. Another way is to look in your local SBCA or animal shelters. Um, if you are a member of the SBCA, you may have gotten an email, and if not, there's a great way to sign up. But a lot of these organizations are looking for foster mommies and daddies right now to take in litters of kittens and puppies or one-off cats and dogs who need a place to stay until the shelter can get them adopted out. So once again, giving you a sense of purpose as someone to take care of and to be your companion and your buddy. Last but not least, a couple things. Once again, letter writing is a great way to stay connected to your community, sending thank you letters to your local neighbors for staying in their homes, or maybe because you know that they're an essential worker. Another great thing to think about too is really volunteering for crisis hotlines. Um, I volunteer for two crisis hotlines, and believe it or not, there's a very large increase of needs right now for people to man the Alzheimer's Association hotlines, the um, Alzheimer's um, Foundation of America, and even domestic violence hotlines, and suicide and mental health prevention hotlines. So once again, if you have that background or that is part of who you are, that's a great way to be able to give back to others and to help them in a really big time of need right now. Last but not least, our Alzheimer's and dementia, how do we keep them connected? Uh, just like you and me, they need to be having virtual visits on Facebook. You can hold the phone for them, let them see somebody. Uh, virtual visits of maybe just having uh, someone turn the phone on where you can have a cup of coffee in the morning with that person and talk to them. Any sort of virtual visits, whether that be doctor's visits, those sort of things can still be done virtually. But really find a way to virtually um, use that technology to connect your loved one. Another great thing is family chats, doing a Zoom call like this where multiple family members can get on once and all see grandma or dad or grandpa at the same time and have a conversation, especially with Mother's Day coming around the corner. Doing sing-alongs, you know, there's a lot of great things on YouTube. Um, as you probably know, people with Alzheimer's, the last thing they lose is that ability to have words to songs. So having sing-alongs on so they can sing along, YouTube has a million of these, or you can go online and find all kinds of DVDs and different subscription services to get. Um, having pet visits, you know, pet visits can be done virtual. If you look into the SPCA, they actually have a program where you can sign your animal up or sign up to have a email or a chat with an animal on a regular basis. Something about seeing those cute little fuzzy faces make everyone so happy. So it's a great way to do those pet visits. Or you can use some respite videos, we call them, which are on the other side for non-technology. And basically, it's almost like that Animal Planet show, Too Cute. It's just a show of baby kittens and dogs and small animals 
that make our uh, seniors who see those with dementia, they really love to look at that. Along with things like travel logs, where you get to see the hills of Ireland and have someone watch that and maybe discuss old memories with you, things they want to tell you. Last but not least is, um, this is a time to record your family history and your legacy. Pull out the phone or the iPad and record grandma or grandpa or great aunt Edna telling those great family stories. You know, why do we have to split the fish in half and put it on two pans every single Christmas holiday? There's a story behind that. What are those family traditions you wanna hand down to your family? What do you want your great grandkids to know about grandma if she's no longer here? These are the things that I will tell you that my family had an option to do with my grandmother and to go watch those videos are absolutely amazing. And it's phenomenal that my son gets to experience all those great stories about me growing up that he may not have had the option to do. And last is virtual support groups. As someone who takes care of someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, or if you're a at-home caregiver in general, Virtual support groups are still continuing to happen. Check with your local areas, sign up for those. They are Zoom, you can jump on, if not by camera, by phone, and still have a chance to get on and have a conversation and have other people in your same situation talk about what's going on. And once again, how do we stay non-technology? Getting chores, having our loved ones with dementia help us set the table, fold the laundry, sweep the yard, water the plants, those things that we take for granted, those hobbies every day singing, having a good time, dancing, pulling those hobbies back out. If dad used to love to do model airplanes, maybe there's a way to get a larger model of something he can actually work with. There are phenomenal resources online for Alzheimer's and dementia. Maybe getting them an animal to take care of during this time, or a for real friend. A for real friend is an animatronic animal. You can buy those at Target, Walmart, Amazon, online. For example, the little kitten, when you hold it, it touches you and paws at you and purrs and its head moves. So maybe giving them the substitute for that. Putting together kits. Kits are things you can put together for reminiscing. So maybe a bunch of family photos and great family heirlooms you can put into a hat box and bring to the table or outside in the backyard and just have a discussion with dad about all those great family vacations you went on. And oh, by the way, record those conversations because you're gonna wanna hear them later, I promise you. Another thing is having, uh, you know, once again, those respite DVDs or TV shows for people to watch. Some stuff that we do with our residents, the kids, we also do baskets. Baskets are help me projects. Sometimes residents who have Alzheimer's or seniors who have Alzheimer's, they need a job to make them feel important. So if mom was always great at helping with the home and doing those things, or maybe dad was good with you know, outdoor work, arrange a basket. Maybe for example, a basket could be all of um, some unbreakable plates and bowls and cups that mom can wash old school for you in the sink after a meal. So she acts and pretends that she's helping you at this moment. Another great thing is folding laundry, baby clothes, matching socks, um, polishing uh, furniture, helping sweep, do the windows, all those things we take for granted. You can make little cleaning baskets. You can make sorting baskets for people. So maybe poker chips that can be sorted by color or maybe actually different colored Fruit Loops, or Cheerios, those sort of things but finding a way to give them a help me project so they feel important. And last but not least is exercise. I always tell this story. Um, exercise is important for everyone, including our seniors with Alzheimer's and dementia. And to leave you with a quick story before we turn it over for questions. Uh, first and foremost, my grandfather had Alzheimer's and the only way my grandmother could get him to walk was take a cookie walk. The cookie walk was she had to go out in advance and hide Oreo cookies along the way in the neighborhood so he could continue to keep walking because once he saw one, she would say there's one ahead and they would keep moving forward. So now is the time to be creative and make up your own cookie walk. That way you can help your loved ones. We do have some great online resources. These are some samples to show you of things that you can connect online, free games, free books, virtual um, volunteering, different tours you can take. And once again, I really encourage you to check out the AARP website. It has phenomenal information to help even anyone, especially if you're dealing with isolation, loneliness, and depression. So thank you, and now we'll turn it open for comments. All right, so it looks like we don't have any questions. So if um, we're gonna post the online resources online. I think it's great to look at. Thank you guys for your time. If you have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, um, take care of yourself, take care of others, and be nice to yourself right now. Have some fun.
and enjoy that extra glass of wine or that bubble bath that you've been saving for a special occasion. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation.